a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. We are going to look at shorting the S&P 500 using ETFs. We're going to do that with our ETF Research Director, Nina Mishra, who joins me now. So is this because of all of the disarray that the market finds itself in these days? Yeah, stocks have been on this roller coaster ride over the past, you know, more than two weeks. Mm. And th that is mainly because of rising concerns about coronavirus, how that is going to impact global growth mm -hmm. because the virus has already sickened and killed so many people in more than 100 countries. Mm. Now, yesterday there was this epic oil crash too, which added to market yeah. fears because Saudi Arabia and Russia started this oil price war and at one point uh, oil was down as much as 30 uh, percent. Uh, so yesterday was the worst day for stocks since the financial crisis. That's March the 9th. Yes. If you are a long-term investor, you should stay focused on your long-term investing goals. Mm -hmm. uh, but many investors are looking for ways to hedge uh, their portfolios and they are looking at these uh, inverse and leveraged ETFs that can be used to short the market mm -hmm. and uh, because there's a lot of interest in these uh, instruments yep. I thought uh, I would highlight some of them. Good time to talk about mm -hmm. it. All right um, so th the first one uh, the first things we're going to talk about here is the inver inverse and leveraged ETFs by no particular name right just as a category yes so there are a few things which investors should understand about using these inverse and leveraged ETFs they are very sophisticated instruments they use derivatives like swaps and options uh, and because they are sophisticated and powerful instruments they should be used only by those who understand them. So they are sophisticated, uh, they are suitable uh, mainly for traders and also other sophisticated ins investors mm -hmm. who understand them. Then they are suitable only for short term trading or hedging purpose. They are, these are not buy and hold instruments. Okay. Uh, most of these ETFs are designed to meet the objective on a daily basis. So if it is uh, providing the inverse return of the S&P 500, it would be designed to provide that return for one day. Hmm. If you hold it for longer than one day, then performance can be very different. For example, if you hold it for 15 days, you should not expect that the ETF would give you minus 15 days return of the uh, S&P 500 uh, index uh, because of the daily compounding and reset that these instruments have. Now, this daily compounding can have both favorable or adverse effect on the returns. When the market is volatile, it has adverse impact on the returns. When the market is trending in one direction, either up or down, compounding can have a favorable impact on the return. But the bottom line is, if you are using these instruments, they are designed for short term only, preferably one day. If the market is going in one direction, you can hold it longer than one, one day, maybe two, three days or whatever, if you are monitoring it very carefully and understand them before using them. All right. Well, we're going to look at three uh, specific uh, situations here. All three of these are from ProShares. Yes. First one is the ProShares short S&P 500. So this provides one-time inverse S&P 500 return, one-time inverse return of the S&P 500 index. It charges 89 basis points. It's been around for quite some time, so has 2.2 billion in assets. Uh, now, I mentioned another ETF there, which is a competitor by direction. The ticker is SPDN. Mm. That provides the same kind of exposure, and it is slightly cheaper. It you, uh, it has an expense ratio of 50 basis points, but it is much smaller, 
with 32 million in assets under management. Now, usually when we discuss ETFs, I recommend the cheapest yeah. ETFs. Not here because these are very short term uh, instruments. These are they should be used for short term. So annual expense ratios do not matter too much for these ETFs. Trading and liquidity, trading costs and liquidity matters more for these ETFs. Uh, because you are if you're holding just for one day or even two, three days, that eighty nine basis points or fifty basis points actually will not make a lot of difference. So it is better to use the larger, you know, the more liquid ETF in this case. Now if you want to learn more about this ETF, you can go to the code page on zax.com. From there you can go to the external homepage of ProShares. And uh, ProShares also has a lot of uh, you know reading materials on how these uh, ETFs, the inverse and leverage ETFs, should be used. Uh, consideration for geared investing. So if you want to use these instruments, it, I would highly recommend that you use some of those, read some of those materials. All right, ProShares also has an ultra short S&P 500 ETF. So it provides two times the inverse return of the S&P 500 index. Uh, expense ratio is 90 basis points. Uh, this is also quite popular, has been around for quite some time, 1.2 billion in assets under management. And again, you can go to the code page and from there, the external home page. Uh, notice that it seeks to provide two times the inverse return of the daily performance of the S&P 500. Uh, index. This that is what investors should remember. Okay, and then finally, ProShares has an ultra pro short. <laughs> the ticker symbol is SPXU. This is the most powerful one. Use should be used with a lot of care because because it provides three times the inverse return of the S&P 500 index. Uh, 91 basis points expense ratio has 735 million in assets under management, so pretty decent liquidity. I highlighted another mm, ETF which provides the same kind of exposure. The ticker symbol is SPXX, that is by direction again. There are only two inverse and leverage ETF providers, ProShares and Direction. So Direction has this three times inverse S&P 500 ETF too which is slightly more expensive in this case, uh, 107 basis points, and slightly smaller. So again, in this case, uh, the investor should look at the cheaper as well as more liquid option. And if you want to learn more about the CTF, again, you can go to the code page, and from there, the external home page, and uh, read more details and how they should be used. Uh, and you can see that uh, these have a lot of swaps uh, to, to uh, you know, achieve the exposure, the desired exposure. And uh, how do they all compare year to date? Mm -hmm. So, of course, the S&P 500 has taken a deep dive in the yeah. past couple of weeks. And with that, the index is down almost 16% year to date. Now, it is rebounding a little bit today. But, you know, in the morning it was much better. And now, the, you know, they have lost most of their gains. So, it may remain you know, volatile in the coming weeks. Again, if you're a long-term investor, my advice is to stay focused on your long-term goals. But as you can see that the three inverse ETFs that we discussed are providing minus one, minus two, minus three times the return of the index. And by the time the market closes today, who knows? Who knows? What's gonna be, yes. right? Do you own a, either of these? I do not. Okay, thanks for that. Don't forget, more ETF information exists on our website, zax.com. Get over to the home page. Use the Funds tab in the top toolbar. It'll help guide you to that section. And every week, Nina hosts and produces a podcast dealing with the world of ETFs called ETF Spotlight. On the Zax homepage, zax.com, if you scroll all the way down, 
click on the word podcast, it'll take you to that section of the site. And don't forget that you can get advance notice of positive earnings surprises because Zach's research uh, is predicting with about 80% accuracy which stocks are going to be beating earnings expectations even before those earnings reports are released. And to get more details on that offer, all you need to do is go to zax.com slash promo. Get all the details there. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.